5. Shrinking from his clothes that were sopping wet after their cleansing, Ayn sensed that something large was scampering his way. When he looked, it was Hamasuke, as he'd thought. Hamasuke's combat ability was far inferior to Ayn's or Narborals. If he'd have forced her to fight, and she got hurt, it would have led to unnecessary expenditures, so he'd had her stand by a little ways away, but apparently she had come out once she could no longer hear battle noises. Ainz was a little depressed he was able to read the subtle change in expression, concerned for her master's safety, on the supergiant hamster's cute face. Having no idea her master was feeling that way, the giant hamster ran over surprisingly quickly and scanned the area. When her eyes met Ainz's, <laughs> she keeled over belly up and continued shouting, there's some kind of crazy monster here that there is! Master! Master! Steeped in the torment of full-body weariness, Ainz held his head. Now that he thought of it, he had never shown Hamasuke his real face. But he couldn't leave it like this. When he looked out at the wall in the distance, he saw that there were some adventurers battling his wraiths. He wanted to think they couldn't be overheard at this distance, but he couldn't say for sure. This is like a bad comedy routine. Would you cut it out? Ein scolded in his dignified tone. Oh, that magnificent, valiant voice! Could it be? You are my master, are you not? Yes, so could you keep it down? What? Your appearance is far different from my most wild imaginings. I thought you possessed great power, but... Now I will be even more loyal to you, that I will. Uh-huh. More importantly, I'll say it again. Keep it down. Master, you're so mean that you are. I would like that you would not dismiss my oath of devotion so casually that I would. Did you not hear what Lord Ainz just said, you fool? A dent appeared in Hamasuke, and she went flying. Where she'd been standing up until a moment before, Narborough was slowly lowering her foot. Lord Hines, I don't believe there is any value in keeping such a stupid creature. May I grill her with lightning? Don't. She's quite valuable to us in terms of reputation, if we use her as the wise king of the forest. Even just taking her around with us live is beneficial. More importantly, Narborough, we don't have much time. Start looting these guys. Assuming the peacekeepers in this city will request us to turn everything in, we need to check for valuables first. Understood. I'm going into the mausoleum. I'll leave the clean-up to you. My lord, what shall I do with the corpses? Will we take them back to Nazarick? No. We need to point to them as the masterminds behind this incident. Just strip their gear. Understood. It hurts that he does. Narborough heaved an exaggerated sigh and sent Hamasuke, who had returned, a chilly glare. Pay more attention to anything Lord Ayn says than your entire existence. That is the duty of a minion. Even a creature like you counts as a minion. Barely. So keep that in mind. If you don't... I'll promptly kill you. Hamasuke shivered. Next time I'll punish you with magic, not a physical attack. In accordance with Lord Ainz's wishes, I'll cause as much pain as I can without killing you. I understand that I do. Please don't look at me with such a scary face that I ask. But I'm astonished by our master's new and powerful appearance that I am. How magnificent! Narborough's expression softened just a bit. Yeah, Lord Hines is truly wonderful to behold. If you understand that, you might have a pretty good eye. I thank you that I do, but if our master has a true form, do you have another form as well, hmm? I'm a doppelganger. I just changed my face. See? She took off her gauntlet to reveal a hand with only three fingers. They were longer than human fingers and looked just like inchworms. Oh, 
I didn't know that I did not. Why are you surprised? You're a part of the great tomb of Nazareth as one of its lowest class minions now, so you can't let a little thing like that shock you. More importantly, why don't you help me loot these corpses? Yes, ma'am, that I will. Inferia was inside the mausoleum. When Ein saw him, the red sparkles in his orbits grew dark. He was wearing some strangely transparent garments. But what Eines was looking at was his face. A cut had been made straight across it, and the trails of hardened blood like reddish-black tears showed that his eyes under their lids had been sliced. It was clear he had been blinded. Well, blindness I can fix. Magic is so handy. The bigger problem was his mental condition. He was standing stiff as a rod and hadn't reacted to Eins's presence. Even if he couldn't see, he should have been able to tell if someone was standing right in front of him. And since he didn't, it meant he was being mind-controlled. The question was, via what? It has to be this. Eins was looking at the spiderweb-like circlet around Inferia's head. There was nothing more suspicious around. He casually reached out to remove it, but stopped. Interfering before he understood what had caused this state was too risky. He faced the circlet and used a spell. Appraise any magic item. In Yggdrasil, the spell would tell who made an item and what it did, and it worked in this world as well. Actually, it worked even better. Things he never would have learned in Yggdrasil popped into his head. A crown of wisdom. I see. But, hmm, considering what it does, this couldn't exist in Yggdrasil. I guess it couldn't be reproduced there. He commented, impressed after acquiring general knowledge about the item. Then he thought about what to do next. The most important thing he considered was the argument for taking Inferia to the Great Tomb of Nazareth just as he was. Getting control of a rare item, and a rare talent, was huge. But he only wavered for a moment. Deliberately failing at a job I undertook would be a disgrace to the name of Einzul Gon. Crumble away. Break greater item. Einz's spell shot at the circlet, and it crumbled elegantly into innumerable tiny sparks. He gently caught the boy as he slumped over, then carefully laid him down and looked at his face. All that's left is to fix his eyes. I guess it'd be better to do that somewhere else, though. Stroking his bony chin, Ein stood up. The undead he'd summoned hadn't been wiped out, but some of them had been destroyed. There was no doubt that reinforcements, the meddlers, would reach this place at some point. He had to recast his illusion, and recreate his armor and swords before that happened. And they had to finish looting. Eins experienced a dark joy in the simple act of robbing all a corpse's gear at once, something that hadn't been possible, PKing in Yggdrasil. As he thought to go help Narbrol with that, she appeared at the entrance to the mausoleum with perfect timing. Lord Eins! What is it? Did you take all their stuff? Money, too? Yes, it's about that. I found this. Narborough went into the mausoleum. She was clutching a black orb. It wasn't a very nice-looking stone. It seemed like the type of rock one could find on the shore of a river. It certainly didn't look valuable. What is it? It seemed very important to the hammerhead worm I was fighting. I don't know what it does. I see. Narbro the NPC didn't know as many spells as Ein's, and most of them were for combat, hence her not being able to appraise the item. Ein's took it and used the same spell as before. Appraise any magic item. The red sparks in his eyes burned brilliantly. What is this? A jewel of death. And it's an intelligent item. For having such a grandiose name, being of death and all, it wasn't such a fancy item. It augmented the user's ability to control undead. 
and allow them to cast a number of ghost magic spells so many times per day. Neither of which held much fascination for Ainz. The downside was that it could control a human in possession of it, but Ainz and Narbrol were protected against mind control, and the jewel couldn't control subhumans or grotesques anyhow. This is a pretty meh item, but... There was one thing about it that interested Ainz, and that was that it was intelligent. When he poked at it, as if telling it to say something, a voice echoed in his mind. We meet for the first time, O oh great king of death. Ein stared at the stone. This was a world with magic and monsters, so it didn't surprise him that something like this could exist. Hmm, you really are intelligent, huh? He deftly rolled the stone in his hand and then stared at it again, but it didn't seem like it was going to say anything. He pondered what the deal was, but then had an idea. I permit you to speak. I humbly thank you, O oh great king of death. That response reminded him of the ardent devotion of the Nazarick NPCs, and Ein smiled faintly. I revere and worship your majesty's presence of absolute death. Eins was pretty sure he had all his auras turned off, so why was this item calling him the king of death? Considering Eins was undead, he figured it was flattery at best. Go ahead. Thank you, being of profound death. I thank all death that exists in this world that I should get to meet you, whom I worship. For brown-nosing, these were pretty serious words, and despite feeling self-conscious, Eins puffed out his chest. And don't you have anything to say besides flattery? Yes, I am deeply aware of how impertinent it is of me, but please, I beg that you would grant my wish. What is it? I always thought I was born into this world to bestow death upon large numbers of people. But now that I have met you, O oh great king of death, I realize the true reason I was born into this world to serve you, your majesty. Hmm. O oh great king of death, please accept my loyalty, and I humbly request that your majesty count me among the lowliest of your faithful servants. It was a sincere voice. Had the jewel had a head, it surely would have been bowed low. Ions curled his right hand and placed it near his mouth while he thought about whether he should make it one of his subordinates or not, about whether he could trust it or not. After a time, he slowly returned his gaze to the item. To be safe, he should destroy it. But it seemed like a waste to destroy any more things that hadn't existed in Yggdrasil. After casting some defensive spells on the orb, he went to the entrance of the mausoleum and called out to the giant hamster. Hamasuke! Master, what is it, hmm? I'm giving this to you. Ainz tossed the orb. Hamasuke nimbly caught it. Master, what in the world is this, hmm? A magic item. Can you use it? Hmm. It seems I can, that it does. But how noisy it is. It clamors to be returned to you, master, it does. Seeing Hamasuke like that, Narbrol's eyes grew wide. You would bestow it on a newcomer? Her slightly shrill voice showed how shocked she was. I took some precautions against detection magic. But I can't say for sure that it's a hundred percent safe. That's why I'm having Hamasuke hold on to it. Aha! Brilliant as usual, Lord Ainz. Not careless even for a moment, you make another admirable judgment call. Narbrol indicated she understood, and Hamasuke, with a lump in her cheek pouch, slightly smaller than a human fist, made a dignified bow. As Ainz was giving the two of them the order to withdraw, the red of his cape caught his eye. Feeling a bit playful, he grabbed the edge of it. Once you're done looting, let's take Inferia. He flourished his cape. And make our triumphant return. <laughs>